Thank you very much Thank for you. the excellent introduction. Can everyone hear me? Maybe <laughs> I also yeah, okay. want to check that. Oh, fantastic. I am absolutely excited to be here. And I see that we have 100 people in this room and I'm a little bit nervous. So, um, yeah, uh, I am Sandra. I live in the Netherlands. Um, I am super happy to be here. I have heard heard before about Wikimentor Africa project. Uh, I have been in touch with one of the mentors, uh, Andra, maybe some of you work with Andra Wagmeister. Uh, and yeah, I, I hear from him that the program is really, really nice. And I am very excited to also hopefully tell you some things that you can use yourself. Um, in So today and tomorrow, um, we have two times an hour and a half. I asked for an hour and a half, but then I thought maybe we can do it in an hour. Let's just see how much time we need. Um, I'm going to do my very best <laughs> to show you the basics of Open Refine. Um, Open Refine is, um, I will maybe in a, in a second start to share my screen, but I can maybe just first start a bit with introduction. Um, it's basically a, a tool that we call, some people call it, Excel on steroids or spreadsheets on steroids, you know, with hormones. <laughs> it's like a spreadsheet software, but much more powerful. Uh, you can use it. It is open source software and you can use it to take data uh, like spreadsheets data and do all sorts of operations with it, wrangle it, uh, clean it up. And you can also use it to um, like convert that data to import it into Wikidata. So for instance, if you have, I don't know, uh, data about uh, films from Nigeria or I don't know, um, streets in your city, or I don't know, um, and you want to import that into Wikidata, then you can use OpenRefine very well for that. And another thing that uh, is very, very new in OpenRefine is you can also use it to um, add structured data to files on Wikimedia Commons and upload files to Wikimedia Commons. So if you have photographs, if you have, uh, I don't know, PDFs of books or something like that, and you want to upload those to Wikimedia Commons, then you can do that. Um, I'm going to try to cover the basics with you. So um, I Open Refine is extremely powerful. It uh, has many, many, many features. It's like a, a cockpit in a big airplane <laughs> with all you know knobs and buttons and things you can you can tweak. Um, and I will try to show you the basics. Try to, I will try to show you all the things that um, I think are really good to know as a beginner that you can get started yourself. Um, I um, yeah. I will show you some things, uh, demonstrate some things to you. Um, also, as housekeeping, I will say um, if you have questions uh, at some point when I'm, you know, showing things and something is unclear, or you want to know a bit more, um, I would suggest maybe that you best ask the question in the chat. Also, like uh, Benedict has uh, suggested in the beginning, um, I would also be okay that you, you know. Uh, open your microphone and, and ask the question out loud. And maybe Benedict can also help me with keeping an eye on yes, the chat uh, if there are questions. Yeah, so could, that would be could, great. They could just raise their hand, I will see, and then let them answer. Excellent. Answer. Yeah. But please, I want to also point out that once you finish asking your question, please, it's important that you turn off your mic back so that you can, can respond to you. Exactly. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do it that way. Um, because um, I am working on a laptop. So when I, I am showing things to you, I will probably not see the chat, the chat. So it's good that, you know, Benedict, you help with uh, also speaking out, but I will yes, probably I also yes, hear the, you know, the hand, hand raise or something. And if I miss a question, you, we can always come back at the end. So, um, all right, I would say I'm let's sorry, dive before you, in. Before you actually start, I can see yes. a hand. I don't know if it's an error. I but, see, uh, I see indeed a hand as well, Benjamin. <laughs> yeah, Benjamin, yeah. Benjamin, yes. you want Did to you unmute yourself? Question? Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself if you have a question. Your hand is raised up. Okay, I think I think it's an error. So okay. maybe just can okay. go on. Good. Um, I have also, I have tried to prepare a little bit for the session. And one thing I have prepared, I will put it in the chat. Um, I have created an etherpad. Um, I'm not sure if you worked with an etherpad before uh, with the Wiki Mentor Africa program. Uh, it's like a collaborative, you know, note-taking place. I have already put a lot of links in there. 
Um, so if there's anything I'm telling you that you want to look at again, or there are links that are, you know, that you see or websites that you see and you want to look at them again, um, you can always look at the Etherpad and uh, go back to it. And I again see a raised hand from, while I, I am not yet sharing my screen, I can still see the raised hands from yeah. Jacob. Jacob, do you have a question? Jacob, if you have a question, if you're speaking, just unmute yourself so we can hear you. Hello, good evening. Hello. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Jacob from Nigeria. Yeah, this is my first time joining. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So, how do we explain Wikidata on the street of Nigeria? That is my question. Okay, so, um, so let me come in here. Jacob, we will be talking about Wikidata later, but just so that we don't deviate so much from what we have in, uh, planned out for today. Um, today, what we, look, what we are looking at, what we're focusing on is on open refine. Um, open refine using Wikidata as well. So um, maybe after that, we can now address um, in terms of what Wikidata is and how to make use of Wikidata um, if you do not, if you're not familiar with this already. But in a nutshell, Wikidata, just see Wikidata like a database that has free um, data that are linked and structured. So um, you could get information from there, just like your Wikipedia, but the difference is that it is structured data. So you have data there in, presented in like a table form. Um, we call it um, item properties and values. So you could assess that. So just so we don't deviate so much from what we have planned today, um, we'll, let's try to restrict our questions to open refine and its usage on Wikidata and Wikicommons. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think you can carry on. Thanks for the question. I think it's a good question, though, by the way. <laughs> so I think it's good if you have a little bit of knowledge about Wikidata to uh, then look at uh, OpenRefine too. Okay, I am going to start sharing my screen. Um, let me see. I'm, I always have to look a little, little bit um, in Zoom how I have to do that. Uh, just a second. Uh, I am getting a bit of an error here of not really seeing all my windows. Just a second. I apologize for this. I have a, lot, a few windows open and that's maybe causing problems. Um, I'm just going to try one thing and see if it works. Oh, yeah, I have to uh, change my system preferences. Excuse me. Excuse me. I will have to quit the Zoom call and come back. I am working on a brand new computer. I am very lucky to have a new computer, but this is actually the first time I'm using Zoom in here. I will be right back. Excuse All right, me. no problem. Um, yes. While we're waiting for a yeah. setup, um, maybe I just throw a bit more light on um, Jacob's question. Um, so Jacob, in terms of um, Wikidata, um, I think your question is how to use Wikidata or what Wikidata is. Um, Wikidata basically, um, let me just... First, Jacob, are you familiar with Wikidata at all? Like, do you know... Um, is Jacob still here? Jacob, if you're here, just feel free to unmute yourself. Yes, I'm new to Wikidata, actually. Okay, so basically what Wikidata is, is Wikidata is just, um, it's just like the Wikimedia movement. If you're not familiar with Wikimedia movement, Wikimedia movement is, uh, is a movement that seeks to actually um, share free educational content, give access to everybody to have basically all, um, what is it called? Sorry, let me, I need to pause this. So while we're waiting for- <laughs> Good to be back. All right. So yeah, I heard also about free knowledge. OpenRefine is also free software. So you can download it for free. It is open source software. 
Um, actually, if there are people in the room who are Java programmers, um, it is also open source software to which you can contribute. And uh, for instance, we um, always have open issues on GitHub that are you know, in need of help. And um, every now and then, not always, we also participate in outreach internships. So we offer outreach internships, not every, every time that there is an outreach project. But uh, if you're familiar with it, it is, uh, it is an internship for um, programmers uh, from underrepresented regions to work with an open source project for a while, usually three months. And it is actually a paid internship. It pays, I think, like six six thousand dollars or something so it, it is not work for free but you actually get paid for work with with the project i'm not sure if we will participate in the next outreach round but maybe uh yet another one so keep an eye on us um and uh, if you are interested in contributing code uh certainly take a look at our uh github um i am now again going to try my to share my screen and this looks much better <laughs> can now really share my screen. I am so sorry, people, that that didn't work before. Um, OK, cool. So um, as I said before, but I can actually share it again. Let me see. Um, we have an Etherpad with all sorts of links. Um, so I, I think most of the things that I will tell you, uh, you can follow them along here as well. Um, and um, the first thing I want to say is, um, of course, good to know where can you find information about OpenRefine itself. Um, OpenRefine has, like most software, has its own website. Um, yeah, I would say that's quite obvious. And there you find uh, the download links. You can download it to your own computer. Um, Actually, OpenRefine is software that you run on your own computer. It doesn't work on mobile. It's only for laptop and desktop computers because it's a really powerful software for big data, for you know spreadsheets. Um, and you can download it for Windows, for Mac, or if you use Linux, also for Linux. So we support all the, all the platforms. Um, and when you have installed it, I let me see, I am struggling a little bit with my windows in my small screen. I will just do a little adjustment here so that uh, probably you will also see a bit more information in the in the screen share. Um, and when you install the software and you open it, then it is a little bit special in the sense that it is um, not really an application that will open as a separate application on your computer, but it will open in your browser, in your web browser. So uh, usually, I don't know if you use a web browser like Firefox or, uh, yeah, uh, I use Chrome, um, then Google Chrome, then it will actually just open a tab in your browser and it will open a place where you start working with the software. So this is what the start screen of OpenRefine looks like. Um, I want to mention, I hear from sometimes from people um, that they don't have very strong computers or sometimes um, I hear from people that they maybe only use a computer at work or in a library or something like that. And um, it is not possible to download software there or uh, OpenRefine doesn't run very well. I, I think normally on normal computers, it, it can run quite well, but maybe you are in a situation where you cannot just install any software. Then for us Wikimedians, there is a really great thing. You can also run OpenRefine in the cloud. And I have put information about it here in the Etherpad. Um, this is something that is maybe has maybe has already been told to you, or you have already seen in previous sessions of um, of the Wiki Mentor Africa pro program. And if not, it's really nice to know. There is actually an online um, cloud environment for various applications, more ma mainly technical applications, in the Wikimedia movement, and that is called PAS. So let me put that in the chat. PAS. I don't know what it's the abbreviation for P A W S. I don't know. Um, did someone want to say something? No, I think it was just a microphone going on and off. Um, but that's basically, I can actually go to it um, and it will lo load a bit slowly, but you can log into it and it's like, on the Wikimedia servers, you can run all sorts of applications, including OpenRefine. And um, so 
this is what pause looks like and you see the little logo here the diamonds we have a diamond logo if you click that one you can also use open refine but it's in the clouds it is on the internet you need an internet connection for it so it's um, if you you run open refine on your own computer you you can work you can do basic things without an internet connection but as soon as you use it on pass you, you you need an internet connection i know quite a lot of wikimedians who use the pass version um okay but that's just for installing running it um and if you ever run into problems with that, um, we also, I mentioned on the Etherpad as well, we have actually quite good documentation about OpenRefine. So um, you can actually find information in our documentation on if you have any trouble installing what may have gone wrong. Um, and we also have a user mailing list and our user community is very, very friendly and helpful. And you can also ask questions on the mailing list. So uh, you can down, you can subscribe there for free and uh, you can an get answers to your question questions there. Um, and yeah, we also have a GitHub for developers here. Um, you can look at our many, many <laughs> outstanding book, book reports and issues and feature requests that we have. But it also, if you have a book, you discover a book or you, you find any mistake in the software, we are always very, very happy that uh, you report it there, that you file a book report. Um, but now you're here for seeing the software, so let's do that. Um, as I said, it is software that is used for data, for working with data. And I usually give a demonstration of OpenRefine to groups like yours with um, example data about World Heritage Sites. Because I think um, I see that I saw in the chat that many people for here uh, are from Nigeria, a few people from Ghana, and then some people. I, I saw someone from France and from the Netherlands. Hi, hi, I'm also in the Netherlands. Um, that's It's an international data set of all sorts of historical sites, uh, like natural parks, uh, important buildings that are world world heritage, that are important heritage for the world, protected by UNESCO. And that has a database. There is there is various data that you can download there where you have the full list of all the, the heritage sites. Um, all, of, all of these are already on Wikidata. And so basically all the data that is in there already it doesn't make any sense anymore to import it to Wikidata, but I can show you some basics of OpenRefine with the data. So um, I see that Husaini is not uh, hearing me well. Are there yeah, other think, people having I the same I think it's probably her network. Um, maybe Husaini, Yusuf, you might maybe want to check with your network because okay. you can hear her very well. Oh, excellent. Yes. Thanks for the confirmation. And I hope you can fix it. <laughs> um, Cool. Um, so um, if you go to this link, uh, this is just one example of a place. Let me see if I opened it indeed in a new tab. Yes, where on ma in many places on the internet, you can find open data sets, um, open data about, like in this, in this example, world heritage. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, data from libraries, data from museums. Um, and um, you can very often download that data because it's under a free license and then use it for, uh, yeah, you can process it, you can use it in Wikimedia projects. You can import that data to Wikidata, but you can also use that data for tables on Wikipedia, for instance. Maybe you want to have an article on Wikipedia in your own langu language, Wikipedia, with a list of all the World Heritage Sites in your country, if that doesn't exist yet. Then this data set would also be really, um, uh, yeah, be interesting for you. So in, on this page, you see that you can download the data in many different formats. Um, RSS, that's like more feed. I don't know if that's useful. XML, that is more like HTML, like the structure of a web page. Um, but you also have XLS and Excel sheet. And I've downloaded this one already to my computer. Um, so you just click here and then it will download to your computer and then you will have an Excel sheet um, with you know all the information about all the heritage sites in the world. And I am now going to open that in OpenRefine. 
And here's where we start to see the software itself <laughs> after a long introduction. Um, so here in, in, the, in the left column, you see various ways in which you can start working with OpenRefine. You can either create a new project, basically start working with a new data set, open an existing project. I have already done a few projects uh, here, um, just some test projects. So this, this is previous data that I've worked with and I can click it and I can go back to it and work on it later. You can import a project that you have exported before, uh, like you worked with OpenRefine before or a friend or a colleague has worked with OpenRefine, they exported it and you can import it. And then you have all sorts of settings that you can set up. Um, by the way, you can also help OpenRefine by translating the interface to your language. I also included the link in the Etherpad for that. If you like to translate, then uh, you can help us with that as well. Um, now I'm going to just create a new project with the file here. This file, this Excel sheet that I have just downloaded, um, that's just a classical Excel sheet, and I'm going to uh, upload it to, to OpenRefine from my computer. So I say choose files, uh, where is it? It is this one. I Probably you are not seeing my window with my files, but so maybe I will make it a little bit bigger for you. Um, I hope everyone sees my screen share well, because I can imagine that the letters are a bit small. Um, yeah, it's very okay now. You can okay, see it. good. Yeah, I increased the size of my, my uh, font a bit. Um, so you see that it has recognized my Excel sheet here. This is just the name of the file. And then I click Next. And then OpenRefine is first doing a preview. So you load it, you get a preview, and then you can inspect, does it look good to me? And then after, after that, you click OK, and then you start your project. So I can just look at, you know, sometimes you have data sets that are not Excel sheets, but that are in other formats. Uh, maybe some people who already work with data will be familiar with the comma separated value files, CSV, or the tab separated value files, TSV, or XML, or whatever. So um, yeah, various formats, and some of them, are maybe sometimes a bit messy and the loading doesn't go super well. So here you can play that you make sure that the data looks good. But in this case, this is a really, really clean, good Excel uh, sheet. So um, I see a, just a preview of the data that I will have. I see that uh, I see one um, heritage site in the Bamiyan Valley. I have absolutely no idea where that is. That's somewhere in the world. Uh, and it has some numbers and it has some descriptions. That's all coming from the UNESCO data. Um, in French and in English, that's quite nice. I'm not sure if there are French speakers here. My French is basic, but I would be happy if you have questions in French, I will probably understand them. Um, there is a date when this became a World Heritage Site, and then there's all sorts of columns. We have the latitude and the longitude, so the geographical coordinates. Eugene, hello! <laughs> yes, I see the chat, that's good. Oh, very good to see you. Um, uh, it's in Afghanistan. So you see the country, you see the region, um, and you also see uh, the code for the for the language. Or for, not for the language, uh, I'm confused for the country. Afghanistan is AF. And we scroll down a bit and I will probably then see some other, uh, yeah, I see some other things. This looks really good to me. This looks clean, this looks good. So I will now start a project it has just taken the name of my file i'm just going to rename it because i like a prettier name and it's going to be clearer later on when i go back to this data set world heritage sites demo because this is demo for you and then you can also give it some tags. That's when you use OpenRefine a lot, a lot, a lot, then you will get a lot of projects. <laughs> and then sometimes it's nice to have tags for your projects, like, oh, I have projects related to cinema, I have projects related to art, to heritage, etc. Uh, people, whatever. So I'm going to call this heritage. You can invent these tags yourself. So there's nothing like, uh, no, no rules for it, whatever is useful for you. And I'm going to say it's a demo. Um, maybe I go, go use it later in another demo of OpenRefine. And now I'm creating my project. It's loading. That sometimes takes a few seconds. 
And now this is what the official like working screen of Open Refine looks like. This is where you do the work. Um, if you used Excel before, maybe I think most of you have, or spreadsheet software, uh, LibreOffice calculator or calc or, you know, the spreadsheet software, open source software is also very possible. It looks kind of the same. It's just, you know, a grid with data in it. And Open Refine is the same. You have a grid with data in it. So there's a row of the One Heritage site, and then you scroll down. Um, we actually have quite big rows because there's a lot of text in here. Um, and we scroll down and we see that suddenly I cannot scroll further. Oh, um, that's because Open Refine actually at the first start only shows you 10 rows at a time. It has loaded all the data. So you see here at the top, um, I'm not sure if you see that quite well, but it's in the blue border here that it recognizes, oh, I have a data set here of uh, 1,155 rows. Um, but it only shows me 10. It does that because it's uh, taking care of the memory of your computer. It's It doesn't want to you know, overload your computer, so it only shows you 10 at a time. But most computers are strong enough these days, so I can switch this to 100 or even to 500 rows. That's going to be a lot slower. Um, 50 is good. I'm just going to switch to 50, and now you see that I can scroll down a lot more, and I see all, you know, uh, 50, 50 uh, sites at the same time. Um, okay, so now I have a window with data, but what can I do with it? I mean, just looking at data is nice, but you know, you want to do stuff with it, of course. Um, maybe um, there's various things you can do in Open Refine with the data that you get. This specific like spreadsheet that we are looking at is really, really clean already. It is very... Uh, you know, there are no spelling mistakes in it. Um, everything is really well written. There are no mistakes. Um, so there's no need to clean it here, but Open Refine would be very good at taking data that is sometimes dirty or inconsistent and making it more consistent. For instance, I don't know if you have um, a list of monuments in your city or something like that. And that list has the addresses of, of each monument or the coordinates, and they are sometimes written in different ways. Then you can use Open Refine to clean that a little bit. That's one thing you can do with Open Refine. But you can also just use it to explore a data set a bit more. For instance, I am now very curious. Um, so we have 1,155 World Heritage Sites around the world. Um, this is coming from the data from UNESCO. Um, that's all the sites, you know, in Asia, in Europe, in Africa, in Latin America, uh, everywhere. Um, I actually am curious, how many sites are there in Africa? Can we figure that out? Um, so you can also use Open Refine to look, you to, to examine your data better. I see a question from Love Okonkwo. Yeah, Love, love um, feel free to unmute yourself. Yes. Okay, um, you made mention of um, using Open Refine to arrange something concerning category, maybe a monument in one's country. Maybe there's a mistake, kind of. Can you, can you display it like an example? I think this data set is also a good example because it's also monuments. Um, it is, of course, World Heritage Monuments. I don't have a data set of monuments, national monuments ready. Um, maybe I can see if I can look for one for the session tomorrow. Um, but I think the principle is exactly the same, you know, whether you work with data about the world heritage or about your national monuments, I think it will look quite similar. Um, so the way that you work with it is going to be the same. Does that help? I, I will actually look for if, if, if I can find a data set uh, for tomorrow that's, that shows national monu monuments. Maybe that's interesting indeed. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're expecting tomorrow. All right, good. Excellent. So, yeah, try to look at this data. Um, I, I will do a demonstration with this data in, this, in the sense that you can do the same kinds of things with other data as well. So maybe you will have information about uh, films uh, created in your country, or I don't know, uh, museums from your country, lists of buildings, something like that. Uh, the principle is the same. Um, one 
So I am going to try to figure out how many monuments there are from Africa. And then maybe even, uh, do we have any World Heritage Sites in Nigeria? Do we have World Heritage Sites in Ghana? And I will see how we can figure that out. Of course, we can scroll down, you know, and we can see like, okay, this one says Europe, this one says Arab states. But um, I can also filter um, and that is one of the nice things that you can do with OpenRefine. You can also do that with Excel, but OpenRefine is really, really strong at that. I will show you how. Um, we have here a column of data that always contains the region. And we've already seen that there are various regions here. Um, we have Europe, we have Asia and the Pacific. And I just want to know what regions are there in the data sets. Um, for that, I am going to every... A column in OpenRefine has this little arrow, um, which is actually, if you click it, you will get a menu for that column. Every column has the same menu, so it is a really, uh, yeah, like long menu. If you go, you will see that there are lots of lots of things you can do with all the data in that column. This is where all the power of OpenRefine is. This is where you find all the functionalities. Um, and a general principle in OpenRefine is that the ones that are used most often are either at the top of the menu or at the bottom of the menu. So whenever you just are getting started and you want to try out things with OpenRefine, just you know go to the menu, see if you understand the commands that are in there. And if not, you can try things. And uh, usually at the top and at the bottom, you will find the most interesting things or the things that are used by most people. And I will start with facet. Facet is actually just filtering um, text facet. That sounds a bit abstract, but I hope when I show what it does that it will make sense to you. Um, I have clicked facet text facet, and then I get in the left side of the screen here, I get a block which shows me all the different options that there are in this column. Um, and we see that there are seven different options. We have Africa, we have the Arab states, Asia and the Pacific, then Asia and the Pacific, Europe and North America. That's probably heritage sites that are in the three continents, maybe between them or shared between them. Uh, we have Europe, etc. Let's. So this is basically a, a way to filter your data set. You see all the options that are there and you see that these are blue links and then you can click on one of these. I'm gonna click on Africa. And then rather than looking at the more than a thousand, we are looking at a hundred um, heritage sites, 98. So there are 98 rows of the 1100 in total that are in Africa. There should be more, right? Uh, I hope that in the future, there will be a lot more world heritage sites from Africa, but these are the current ones. And um, that's a lot less. And so now we can also again scroll and you know take a look like, oh, there's one in Botswana, in Burkina Faso. And I'm actually going to do the same with the states. Um, I'm also going to do a facet and a text facet here. And then I see all the states in Africa as well. So I've narrowed down to Africa. I've gone from 1,000 to 100. And now I am actually going to see if I find Nigeria on the list. It's alphabetical. Uh, Nigeria only has two World Heritage Sites for such a big country. People. <laughs> okay, that could be more, I guess. I'd, probably there are also a lot of yeah, sites yeah, that maybe... Yeah, only, you know, more. <laughs> yeah I guess that <laughs> there are a lot of beautiful places that deserve to be on this list. But these are the two official ones already accepted by UNESCO. And so now we have actually narrowed our data set to two uh, in Nigeria. And let's say uh, we also have people from Ghana in the room. Um, Where's Ghana here? I can also click on Ghana. Now I switch to Ghana. And for instance, I can also, you see that if I go over the Ghana value with my mouse, you see that on the right, you see edit and exclude. And I will go back to Nigeria. And I can also include Nigeria. And now I have four rows. And now I have the sites in that are in Africa and then narrow down to Nigeria and to Ghana. So that's a, that's a smaller selection. Um, this is a very powerful thing you can do with OpenRefine. You can actually look at your data sets, narrow it down, uh, see like, ah, um, I'm interested in this specific part of my data, and you can have a close look at it. Um, 
you also see that you can edit uh, things. As I said, the data set here is really, really clean. So some, it is not really necessary to edit. But let's say that maybe UNESCO made a mistake in the way that South Africa is written in the data. Then you can just edit it here. This is your local data set. So you're not changing anything on the UNESCO site. This is just your local copy that you're changing. Let's maybe South Africa is officially written like this, I don't know, and you want to fix the mistake, then you do this, and then South Africa is going to be changed everywhere. Um, so this is one of the ways in which you can start cleaning data just by editing. You can also go to an individual cell and edit that individual cell. Um, can I do, do this somewhere? Uh, maybe we also have these big descriptions here. Um, these come from the website because you see that there are HTML tags around it uh, for people who are familiar with HTML, the speed thing. Um, I can also say I just want to clean up this um, specific cell. I want to remove the HTML tag. So you see that I, oh, maybe I want to quit too quickly. You can just also go with your mouse over one, one cell here specifically, and you can say edit. Click on, on edit, it pops up, and then you can start editing that specific information in here. So let's say that I don't want this HTML in here. I can remove it. And there's also, yeah, this like HTML modification of uh, the accent graph, accent aigu for the French speakers. Uh, maybe I want to clean that up as well. So, um, but yeah, now I'm only doing that for one cell. Mm, and that's, I mean, for 1100 cells where the same mistake may have happened, maybe I also want to do that all over the data set. So there are also all sorts of functions to not just edit one individual cell, but also edit everything that is in a column at the same time. For instance, I can here again, go to the menu on top, and then rather than faceting or narrowing it down, I can actually go to edit cells and then, for instance, I can do replace. And I can say wherever there is um, like the HTML tag P. Um, and I want to replace that with nothing. I want to just remove it. Then I do this. And then in this entire column, this is just a demo. I am I have removed all the P's. And maybe I also want to uh, replace the this e ax a axon grave with you know the correct thing the way that you actually write it in French. Uh, I will replace it again. Um, grave is aigu grave. I'm now forgetting. Excuse me if I do it wrong. <laughs> uh, I my French is rusty. I think it is ooh, um, this one. Grave aigu. Okay. Maybe I make a mistake here. It looks good. I think I did it right. <laughs> so rather than uh, now you see fortifié, uh, strengthened forts, um, now I replaced it, right? OK, this is really basic. This is search and replace. You can also do that in a spreadsheet software in Excel. You can also do that in OpenRefine. Um, if you are a developer, you may already be thinking, oh, maybe I can do little scripts here. Maybe I can, you know, um, find all the HTML tags in general and have a little script that, that does that. And maybe I can use uh, regular expressions. Yes, you can. Um, you don't have to be a developer to use OpenRefine. I am not a developer myself. I just use it as a regular user. But um, yeah. Uh, if uh, if you are a developer, you can do all sorts of more powerful things with it because you can also do scripting. I'm not going to go super deeply into that, um, but we have a lot of information about that in our documentation as well. So if you actually want to do more powerful things like uh, actually scripting things to modify columns, etc., then um, you can uh, certainly do that. Um, one place where you do that, I'm just going to show the place where that happens is by using transform, the transform uh, feature. And here you can actually type all sorts of code, sort of scripts that say like everything that is between, I don't know, uh, square brackets or between angular brackets, I want that to be removed 
um, things like that, or I want to join two columns together. You have all sorts of little scripts for that, and uh, this is where you do that. I'm not going to go super deeply into that because uh, it is a bit more advanced, but um, yeah, it is a very handy thing. It, As I said, it is very well described in our documentation, so um, I haven't actually shown uh, the open refine documentation yet. Let me see. Um, this is our user manu manual, and there is a section on expressions. And this is actually where, if you are a developer, uh, this is our coding language. Um, this is where you find the reference to it and examples. So um, even I, as a non developer, sometimes look up little bits of code and I just paste them because I can just reuse them. Um, that's already more advanced. Cool. Um, other things that you can do um, with OpenRefine um, is uh, maybe some of the information in here is not very useful to you. You can remove columns. You can move them around. You can switch them around. You can also hide columns. For instance, all these long descriptions, you see that they take up a lot of space in my screen. And I am just going to do um, collapse them. I'm not throwing them out of my data set. I'm just moving them into a, a narrow thing that doesn't show the text anymore. I'm going to do the same here. If you collapse this column. And I'm going to do the same here as well. And collapse this column. This is a lot better. So you see now I can easily now see all the four uh heritage sites it is like it's basically hiding collapse sometimes we give things a little bit of a different name but collapsing is hiding really <laughs> so yes goodness go ahead i see that you have a question or you at least you raise your hand yeah goodness go ahead all right can you all hear me yes oh, then, Claire. all right okay i i saw you collapse some columns what of if we want to remove a column completely like there's an error and you do not need that uh, set of data you want to remove it completely how do you do that excellent question <laughs> um like everything it is in i am now just opening the column again the collapsing opening i i actually don't know what it's called like <laughs> uh by just double clicking here then they open again Maybe I just want to get rid of these columns entirely. Um, I actually don't need them for the demo either. You can also say, um, go to the menu and then edit column. And then it is here, remove this column. Bye bye column. Now it's gone forever. Well, not forever. I will come back to that. Um, I'm also going to remove this one, the French short description. It's all information I'm not going to use. Um, edit column, remove this column. Oh, you see it, well, I, there's also, I have to do this again for every column. Um, that takes a bit of time, it's it's okay. We also have a handy feature, the first column actually of Open Refine, the first column of your data set that mentions all, um, actually has some extra features. That's the special column <laughs> that also says edit, uh, it it also has a feature where you can even, uh, you know, reorder things and uh, remove things. So, for instance, I can switch around latitude and longitude here, um, and I can see the justification. Justification that was also the long text. I'm, I can throw that here, and then it will remove that. So, there we go. So these are two ways to remove columns. Now. One thing I haven't said yet, and it's actually really important, and I use it all the time. Imagine I've now removed all these columns and reshuffled them, and I'm like, oh no, I shouldn't have done that. I lost important information and I messed it up. Uh, OpenRefine also has a very powerful feature to undo uh, your history. Uh, if you've done steps that uh, were not good, you can actually turn them back, turn back the clock. And you find that here. Uh, so you find that here after the facet filter tab here, where you have you know the filters that I just made or the facets. You also have here a tab that says undo redo, and there I can actually just click on the step where I want to go back. So here I'm now clicking on step three, and I'm going back to the third step that I did. 
So I'm seeing my columns again. So we have a project history that you can go back to. Um, you can only go back um, from the point where you are. So you cannot go to the middle. Like sometimes I have a project where I do 100 things and you cannot go to step 50 and 52 and remove these. So it's only the, the, the last ones that you can undo. And you can undo a lot of the last ones. You can undo 99 of the hundreds but you cannot go in the middle. I hope that makes sense. But we are improving that. We are actually building features so that you can also do that in the middle in the future, but not now yet. So you have to be a bit careful. You cannot go back to the middle. And uh, I cannot say just undo step one and keep step two. That's not possible yet, but it will come in a, in a later version. Um, yeah, but I was happy. Uh, it was actually okay with uh, reordering and removing. So I'm gonna go back. So you see, switch, switch, back and forth history uh it's it's nice um so don't be afraid to experiment with open refine because of this you can make mistakes it's okay you can go back um good i think with this i have covered some basics of how the software works you know where you find the menus um i cannot tell you all the little things that all the different menu items do um, but I think these are the basics that is also like a basic foundation to work with Wikidata. If you know these basic things, if you know where to find the menu, you know where to find the documentation, you have all the power. <laughs> so uh, this is the basics. Now I'm going to make a little step to Wikidata. But first, I want to answer if Husaini has yeah. a question, then I will be happy to answer that. Hey, Yusuf, um, you have the floor. Can you unmute yourself so we can hear you? Yusuf, are you there? If you can hear us, unmute yourself. You're still muted. Yeah, go ahead. Hello. 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 Uh, I'm not sure I'm hearing you. Um, it's very, very silent. Yusuf, you might want to use the chat. Um, we can't hear you. So maybe just type your question or the comment. Oh, we are sure you will read it and answer the question. Okay, let me just read my. I mean, uh, you know, I have one question, please. There was a one statement you have said. I missed it, and it, it was very, very important for me to even have that. Uh, I don't know if it's from me, but I think your 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 volume is very low. Yeah, I. Hello. Hello, Mama. You. Okay, um, maybe you should just try using the chats. Yes, uh, please. I I heard that you your question included a, a, the word menu, but otherwise I could not hear it very well. So if you could please type it, I will be happy to answer. Um, I see also a question, how do we create new projects? Um, uh, can a new project be created directly on the OpenRefine platform or must it be imported? You can uh, create as many projects as you like. Um, so now I'm working on these world's heritage sites and I can actually just quit OpenRefine or go back to the start screen of OpenRefine. I can actually do that now. I usually just um, click on the logo here and then I will go back to the home screen. That will take a few seconds to load. Here we are. And then I can say, I'm gonna take another data set. Oh, I don't actually have one ready. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, because this is such a new computer. <laughs> I am so happy with my new computer, but it doesn't have a lot of data on it yet. Oh, that's a, that's a bit of a drawback. Um, yeah, as you can see here, this is the last project that I created, but you can actually just go ahead and add another data set and yet another data set and yet another data set and just keep adding, um, yeah, adding more uh projects as you go. So as you continue working with OpenRefine, you will get a long list here and you know uh, you can all keep all your projects in there. You can also import indeed. So this is creating from an external data set. Um, importing would be, let me show you that, um, that you have done a previous project in OpenRefine and you have exported it to the OpenRefine format and then you import it again. This is maybe a little bit confusing. Um, 
is just going to create a duplicate project for me now. This is another, this is a project that I, I worked on in the, in the past. This is actually something with Wikimedia Commons. Um, you see that it's also a data set and it is also already a previous open refine thing that I've imported now. Um, I also see um, a question about um, if you, you can use the application without the internet. Yes, if you do the basic data things, like everything that I showed you until now, you can use it locally. As soon as you start, of course, working with Wikidata, you will need the internet because you will communicate with Wikidata over the internet. Um, you will ask things, things to Wikidata, you will send data to Wikidata, because, and then you will start uh, doing things with uh, the internet, but just working with a data set and understanding it, cleaning it up, that is something you can do locally. Um, and indeed the session is recorded, so if people have not fully understood, I hope uh, looking better, back at the recording will help. I have now reopened the project, so I've gone back to the start screen, I've gone to my list of projects, clicked it, um, and um, I'm back to the day, to the to the set here. I will actually filter again. Um, just the repetition is good. Um, all the countries. I will make a text facet with the countries. And one thing I haven't shown yet is you can also search. So you can create a text filter. That is just you type a text and then it will find everything with that text. Let's say Africa. I type Africa here, then it just does a search for Africa. Um, let me see. I want to, again, make a, sm a small selection. Um, I'm going to take Congo. Why not? Democratic Republic of the Congo. I'm again going to take Ghana. And I am again going to take Nigeria. And that gives us nine rows, right? And now, let us now imagine a little bit that, let's imagine, that's not true, but just imagine because we, we are doing an exercise and a demo here. Let's imagine that these um, like uh, parks are not fully described on Wikidata yet. Um, actually, there's a, a there are people, there's a user group that is working on Wiki heritage, on, on, on world heritage, and they have already entered all the information about all the heritage sites on Wikidata. But let's assume that's not the case. Let's assume that Africa, you know, African uh, heritage sites are maybe already on Wikidata, but the data about them is incomplete. Maybe there is not complete data about the date when they got listed on the heritage uh, register of UNESCO, maybe, um, I don't know, uh, we don't have correct data about the coordinates yet, and we want to add that to, to Wikidata. I'm going to show you how, how you do that. Um, the first thing you want to do is actually, um, you want to start connecting OpenRefine with Wikidata. So what we are looking at here, is all these little cells that we have here, I'm now just clicking on edit to, to show you the text a bit better, are just plain text. Uh, these are not connected to Wikidata. So OpenRefine does not know, is this a Wikidata item? Is there a Wikidata item for the Virunga National Park or for the Asante traditional buildings? Is there a Wikidata item at all or not? It doesn't know that. Um, and in order to be able to edit Wikidata in a later point, op of course, OpenRefine needs to know, oh, um, the Virunga National Park is Q, uh, has a Q number at Wikidata, is Q number Q543167, and I need to add data to that Q number, right? So it needs to be connected to Wikidata. We call that reconciliation. Um, it's again, we use terminology, <laughs> it's a bit jargon. Um, we are actually going to look up the like the names in this column, which are just plain text and see if they, if we can find the Wikidata items for them. And that's also really powerful, really nice. And for that, um, I hope I'm going to make that clear. I am again going to the powerful menu on the top of the columns and I say the thing at the bottom, reconcile, and then I click start reconciling and then i'm gonna remove this one that's for 
tomorrow, <laughs> uh, if, if you're interested at least. Um, when you install Open Refine from scratch, you will see that there is one service in here, a reconciliation service for Wikidata. It says Wikidata Reconcil Link. Uh, that sounds quite obscure, but that's basically, um, if you click that, which I'm going to do now, you will activate um, an algorithm, a piece of code that does lookup of your information in your data sets and will look up every single cell on Wikidata and will try to find the Wikidata file item for it. So it's basically a program. The reconciliation service is a program that searches Wikidata for you. And um, at first you will see a screen that asks you, oh, is all of this, I don't know, um, is it an archaeolog archaeological site or is it a protected area? Mm. I actually don't know. I think it's a mixed. It's a mix of um, national parks. It's a mix of heritage buildings, of important buildings. So it's probably some of these things and everything. Um, I am actually gonna say I'm gonna reconcile it against no particular type. What I'm doing here is actually I'm gonna tell the reconciliation service. I hope that makes sense. Um, that it's. If I would click archaeological site, it would actually take the nine names and would go to all the archaeological sites on Wikidata and try to find it. But most of the things in the list are not archaeological sites, so it wouldn't find it. And if I say reconcile against no particular type, it will actually go to all of Wikidata, all of the 100 million items, and it will try to find it among all of the million items. So it's just going to grab into a bigger bag, basically. Sometimes it makes sense to do this because it's faster. But now I have a small selection of things and I'm going to try this one. Um, seeing it work, I hope will make, make, make more sense than me just talking about it here. I click start reconciling. And then we wait a few seconds, hopefully not too long. Uh, Maybe I made a mistake here <laughs> in the sense that I, I said reconcile against everything and that usually takes a long time, but it worked. Yes, fantastic. Uh, I am actually super happy. <laughs> so you see that there's been a subtle but important change here. I hear someone's mic. Maybe someone is trying to say something or just a mic has gone off. I don't know. Um, you see that suddenly the links here in this column of our nine... Selections have become blue. Sorry for that, I think. Um, That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I think somebody has unmuted themselves. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll carry on. Yes. So you see that links have gone blue, and when you put your mouse over them, you will see a little hover hover card, an info card, with uh, information that comes from the Wikidata item. So we actually made the link to the Wikidata item here, so I can actually click this one. And then I go to the Wikidata item of Salonga National Park that's in Congo. I am going back to, to Open Refine. Uh, set. And we have a few that are not fully matched yet. Uh, I'm very happy that, that this happens because I can show you the different scenarios that happen. Um, you also see that we have the Sukur cultural landscape. Let, us, let me just pick which country is that. That's in Nigeria. And the other one is also in Nigeria, the Osun Ok Osogbo Sacred Grove. Hmm, interesting. Um, these here, the reconciliation service, the software has found two different possibilities. Uh, maybe it is this one, Sukur, or maybe it's the Sukur cultural landscape. I so usually you know, when I get the option to choose between different ones, it, it means that the algorithm wasn't sure and it allows you to make the choice. Usually I will go to Wikidata itself and double check a little bit. But now let's assume I know for sure this is the correct one. Then I can say match the cell. See, the link is also blue. And um, let's see, maybe the secret growth is the correct one. Yeah. It does say secret growth, so I will say match this cell. And now we have nine blue links here and nine connections to Wikidata. Um, I made it, I did it with a small selection on purpose because 
the reconciliation service algorithm, it is a very powerful algorithm and it needs to do a lot of calculation. Um, it searches Wikidata, it goes to Wikidata, it uses this, the query service as well, if you've already looked at Wikidata, or maybe in the future you will uh, encounter that. So it is it needs time. Um, if I would do this on the entire set of more than a thousand things, we would actually be sitting here for an hour. We would just, you know, all we could all have a drink and some ice cream or whatever you want to do or eat, and then in an hour it would be done. So if you need to reconcile a lot, a lot of things at the same time, then um, it's good to take into account it will take time. Um, so long, long lists take time. You can do it, no problem at all, but you just need, need to take into account that it's not going to happen in a few minutes. Um, but nine things, that's good. Uh, let's say um, I am actually interested in adding the geo coordinates to these sites. Let's imagine that these geo coordinates are not yet on Wikidata. Now, um, so we have the latitude and the longitude, but Wikidata needs to have um, geo coordinates in the format latitude comma longitude. So we have two columns here, and I actually have to combine the information in these two columns into one. Ooh. I did not prepare for this, so I'm now getting a little bit nervous. Okay, let's try this. Um, I'm actually going to go to... Uh, uh, oh, wait, I can I can do this. Yes, I'm improvising a little bit. I can actually say edit column, join columns. I want to join two columns. I, I'm going to join longitude and where is my latitude column? Mm. I think I have to do it with the previous one. I'm gonna do it again, join columns, latitude, longitude. Yeah, I'm gonna join the two and I'm just gonna put a comma between them because that's how Wikidata wants latitude, longitude coordinates to be, the latitude comma the longitude. Um, and I am going to write in the result in a new column named G Geo Coordinates. I'm just going to give it a name that makes sense. You can give your columns any name you like. There's no strict rule. Just give it a name that makes sense to you. And I am going to say OK. And now I have a column that is named Geo Coordinates. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. Now, how do I get this information into Wikidata? Um, this is the last thing I'm going to show, I think, for this session today, because I think in terms of information, it is um, enough, I think, for processing. Tomorrow we have another session. Um, and I see that Benedict is giving me the, the hint. Sandra, keep it to five minutes, and that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to do that, Benedict. Um, how do I edit Wikidata now? So we have... The knowledge here in OpenReFi now that uh, these are Wikidata items and I have a column with correctly formatted uh, geo coordinates. Then I am actually going to go to the right in the interface and I'm just shuffling some things around so that I see my own screen. Um, we have here a, a menu that says extensions Wikidata. Here, there are all sorts of Wikidata functionalities. And one of them is edit schema. Mm, basically, that's a place where you will format how you want your Wikidata edits to look like. And I have selected that. Um, you see that I also get tabs here, schema issues and a preview. We will come to that in a few minutes. Um, I am actually, what I want to do is I want to take every Wikidata item here and just say coordinate location is the coordinates. Very simple edits. Uh, you can do a lot more complex things, but just for the demo now, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to go back to the schema. You have to click Add Item, and then you can start dragging. You see here that here we have little blocks with all the columns in the data set. It's a really big data set. Huh? You've seen that. Um, and you see that the one that I've reconciled has this green border below it. I can take that and drag it here. And then OpenRefine will know, oh, I need to edit that. Um, it 
because of the green line, it's been reconciled. It has the link to Wikidata. So I can take that Wikidata item, that queue number, and I can go and do an edit with it. And then you can all do all sorts of things with it. Um, you can add, if you're familiar with Wikidata, you can change the label, you can change the description, you can add aliases. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that. Uh, suppose, say, you have, I don't know, that's very possible. You have in your native language labels for all these heritage sites. That's actually an interesting thing to do. Then you can say, um, I don't know, Igbo. In Igbo, um, the label for my um, for this site is this one. I'm I'm actually taking the French name, so this is wrong. But if you would have a column for you know the Igbo label, then you could add that or any other language, right? Ah, this is just to show how you can add labels, descriptions, uh, aliases. That's one thing I'm not going to do now. You can also add statements, and that's what I am going to do here. Um, I click Add Statement, and I am changing the coordinate location. So here it finds the property. And where is it? All the, yeah, this is the new column that I just created. Geo coordinates. That's exactly what I want. Um, I could give it a reference too. Uh, on Wikidata, it's always good to give things a reference. Now I'm a little bit lazy. <laughs> I'm not doing that, but I always try if I do real Wikidata edits to add a reference. Um, so um, yeah, this is my edit. And I can see that I have nine issues around it. Open Refine will also give you some recommendations like um, well, on Wikidata, we usually add references, so please add references. Um, so it will give you warnings. You can see where the mistakes happen. Um, and you see a preview of what your edits will look like. And you can actually see that it's it's going to be nice geo coordinates. You see that Virunga National Park is going to get the coordinates that looks like this. And let's see, the Sukur Cultural Landscape, which we just matched, is going to get these coordinates. And then if I would do the actual actual update upload to Wikidata, then I go again to the extension menu here, and then I say upload edits to Wikibase. Wikibase is the, <coughs> sorry, the software behind Wikidata. I enter my wiki username, my password. I can actually do that. Okay. I log in. Open Refine encourages you to use a bot password, but you, you don't have to do that. It's not compulsory. And then I can give an edit summary and I can say upload edits. I'm now not going to do it because I know that these items already have the geo coordinates, but if they wouldn't, then I could do that. So that's it. Basically, this is how um, you edit Wikidata very basically with Open Refine with some basic functionalities. Thank you so, so much, Sandra. This, uh, to be honest, I, it's been so long, I learned so much like this. <laughs> um, there's so many things running on my head right now, as in, like yes, the things yes, I can yes. do with this, like the powers that this gives me, um, especially if you work with, if you do data cleaning, if you do data analysis, like what you're just doing, like I could just see how it makes life easy. Um, so, yeah, but because we're out of time, I want to allow every other person who has a question to just ask their questions. Um, so if anybody has any question for Sandra, please, this is the time to ask. Um, we have, I think, for the next five minutes, you can answer your questions. Questions, or comments, something that you need more explanation on, um, you could ask now so she could answer you. So um, there's something... Um, uh, Eugene said on the on the chat. I don't know if you saw that. I, I saw it passing by about translation, but it went yeah. while I was speaking, so I didn't really fully see it. Yeah, it was it was talking about creating like a plugin translation plugin um, for like adding a new column and all whatnot. Um, sounded really really interesting to me. Uh, I I was just teasing him on the chat that he could because Eugene is one of our mentors, uh, so he could yes. just do that with his adopted, the adopted mentees he has. So um, yeah, Eugene, if you can still hear me, as I, I'm still training out there, you could just maybe try doing that with your mentees. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, someone else is, 
I say this sounds quite compl uh, complex but interesting. Um, yeah, I feel it sounds complex probably because of the so many function uh, yeah. features it has. So mm -hmm. obviously it's going to be complex, but still it's still easy. I, I think I personally I find it easy. Um, one of the things I like about the Open Refine is that you don't have to know how to program. You, yes, you can come from just is. This is just like GUI related, just the graphical user interface. You're just doing. Um, yep. So if you've used Excel before, you should find this way, way more easier. And yeah, I think, I don't know. If, does anybody have a special question? Okay, yeah, Goodness still has a question. Her hands raised up. Um, goodness, the floor is yours. Please feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, thank you very much, Sandra. Um, I'm actually trying um, this. Um, open refine uploads you are doing i'm actually trying it on my system and um, i also tried um, doing the reconcile i was i am working with um, books just few books i have in my house so i got a database for 10 books so i'm trying it out here so i i'm wondering if we reconcile on wikidata and there are um, links or other things like i'm working with an author and the link of all the publications the author has is showing up. What do we do? Should we go ahead or we select just the name? And that's my question. Thank you. Mm. It is possible that, oh, that there are maybe also not yet Wikidata items for what you are looking for. Um, maybe you have books in your, I don't know, uh, in your bookcase that don't have a Wikidata item yet, but they can have a Wikidata item. That is maybe something I can show you tomorrow, how to create new Wikidata items. So, um, yeah, I don't know if that's, that's the question that you had. Um, I can imagine that most of the authors, so you might have a data set with title of the book and the name of the author. If you would reconcile the name of the author, then you would get matches. I can imagine that every author of the books in your bookcase should definitely have a Wikidata item, but maybe not all the books. Um, just knowing Wikidata, not all the books in the world have a Wikidata item, but many should have. And that would be a thing where we can create new items to an open refine can that can do that as well. Um one minute your hand is raised up. You have a question? Feel free to unmute yourself. Hey, thank you so much. Um thank you so much, Sandra, for that wonderful presentation. In fact, uh, I to mine. Um, I think quite a number of the uh, our community members get blocked uh, when they are using the quick statements to, to um, add some statement wicked data, and that is because sometimes. Um, some some of the Latin characters. I mean, if they are, if they, they want things or items that has to do with uh, people's names, and it has some Latin characters that is not known. Let's say Dagbani. The person wants to add um, statements in Dagbani. So after running the statements in the using the quick statements, the so the names do convert into times even um, uh, numbers. And they often get blocked. They block them thinking they are changing people's names unnecessarily. So I was thinking how open refine could be used so that um, if you are uh, presenting your data on CSV or maybe Excel, you could um, refine it a big statement. I am very excited about your question. Um, I at OpenRefine, we want to be good at supporting as many alphabets, characters, uh, Unicode in, as possible. So, and we are actually even doing a project on that. I would be very interested in seeing the kind of data you want to import that doesn't work with quick statements, because we want it to work with, with OpenRefine, and I would really like to test it. Um, I cannot promise that it will. We sometimes hear... Um, We've heard, for instance, from people in New Zealand, where the Maori language has these uh, carats, I think it's called these stripes above the, the vowels. I'm not a linguist, <laughs> that they sometimes also have problems, but I really want to know that it happens. So I would be really interested to, to hear and to get maybe data, example data that you want to import and that could not happen through quick statements. 
please, uh, yeah, be in touch with me if you have some examples. Hey, thank you so much for that. I think every other question we could take that tomorrow and uh, and continue. So just take down your questions and tomorrow, um, same time as today, we'll meet here again and then you can ask your questions. I really want to appreciate you, Sandra, for this wonderful, wonderful eye-opening experience, my eye-opening lecture. Um, for those who missed it or those who had network issues, do not worry. Um, this session is being recorded, and then um, I will be posting it on our group uh, on the Wikimedia Africa project. Speaking of recording, I need to stop this recording.